Now my heart is really in the vineyard. When I had my winery, I'd go out, put on my headphones, go out into the vineyard and just be in love with training them, pruning, training. So we start pruning our vines in about uh, January. And uh, I'll show you exactly what they are. You could see some of the Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, these were uh, 1991. So uh, you could see the clusters of grapes up here. What we're trying to do on Sauvignon Blanc, it's a white grape and it's prone to get sunburn. And when you get sunburning of Sauvignon Blanc, you're gonna get more harsher, more grassy tones. So we wanna keep that away. So what we do is create this canopy and it acts like an umbrella. It's called GDC or Geneva Double Curtain. What we're trying to do is create these vines to create this canopy that's gonna shade the grapes, keep them from sunburning. But what we found over the years is that it creates this unique microclimate in here and when it gets cold here at night, it kind of harnesses the heat and we'll release it and we'll get fuller bodied, uh, more tropical tones. Where if you take a Sauvignon Blanc and let it sunburn, you're gonna get the grassy tones, but also you're gonna get more of the uh, tartar grapefruit tones. But if you let that ripen and get uh, the heat to help ripen that, you're gonna get more of the melon and kiwi effect. And you're also gonna get a little higher sugar that's gonna to transcend to alcohol and fermentation. And that gives you body. So you're getting these tropical tones and bigger body. So now you've got a wine that a chef, a chef could not only serve as an, with appetizers, but could take directly into dinner because you've got that fullness that will uh, marry with the flavors that that great chef is trying to pair with. So what we're doing is, if you look at these, now this is the cordon, now this is a spur, and off the spur comes two arms. Now these two arms, each one of them generally produces two clusters. So if you know how many spurs you have and how many cordons, you could calculate exactly how, many, how much tonnage you're gonna have on each vine and then you know how many vines per acre you have. You could calculate what your tonnage is gonna be coming in. But what we're gonna do is each year you have to use new wood. So this is gonna turn brown this year. Now next uh, spring, generally January or February, we're gonna take the lowest arm and keep it. We're gonna cut this one off and then we're gonna count two buds. One, two buds, cut right here. These two buds are gonna be next year's new wood. So we're perpetually keeping. The reason we're taking the lower one, if you took the higher one, then each year it's gonna go up. And in 30 years, when this tree is really mature, you're gonna be up in stilts trying to prune it. So we keep it down so we could keep it controlled right here. But you could see how the vines, uh, the vines and uh, grapes really coexist to create those great flavors. So this is Sauvignon Blanc. Now the reason Napa Valley is so incredible, uh, it's one of those little diamonds in the world. Now we have the Mayacamas Range over here. Mayacamas Range is holding back all the coastal effects. Without this range, it would be too cool here for Great Cab. That range over there is the Vaca Range. Now the Vaca range, you could see how uh, barren it is, and it's gonna even get more barren as we get heat. Now this is a very cool year, but as that, that is barren because on the other side of that hillside is uh, Central Valley. You've heard of Modesto or Manteca or Fresno. It could be two o'clock in the morning, it's still gonna be 80 to 90 degrees, and grapes do not have a chance to sit there and rest you have to pick them earlier because they ripen so fast that the sugars jump up and they don't have the time to build great flavors. But because of this little valley and those barriers, you get this beautiful cooling trend that comes back in every uh, night about anywhere between 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock from the ocean, San Pablo, San Francisco Bay. Cool trends is sucked right down the fog and it cools everything off. And when grapes go below 65 degrees, 
they stop evolving sugar and they just sit there and rest. So you get all the flavors and not the sugars that jump so you can leave them on the vine. Longer you can leave grapes on that vine, the more flavors you're gonna build in. And that's why we're world class here. Okay, 